Um, so Karen was just asking like how we became involved and what we liked about the project. Um, so I was living briefly in Montreal um, in 2016 and I actually met Amelia on um, a short film that we were both um, helping out a friend on and she shortly after that was filming um, a teaser for a feature film concept that she had which was Bleed With Me um, and they were applying for a grant with it and she asked if I would um, uh, play the role of Emily for this teaser and when she kind of told me the plot I liked the sounds of it and um, on set of shooting that teaser is when I also met Lee for the first time and uh, we had such a blast shooting that. Um, at the time it was like a bit different. Um, we shot the scene where me and Rowan and Brendan are kind of playing cards and drinking and Rowan gets a bit too drunk and then at that point it was kind of Brendan and I are kind of stealing Rowan's blood while she's sleeping. Um, but I had such a blast on that and just kind of immediately fell in love with everyone who was working on it. And then a couple of years later, Amelia came to me and said like, Hey, remember that teaser we shot? I wrote the whole script and mm -hmm. do you want to play Emily? And I was just like a hundred percent. Yes. Mm -hmm. of course. And then especially when I heard Lee was still a part of it as well, I was like, there's no way I'm saying no. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, so I came on after that and, um, there's so many things I loved about it. Um, but I would say my favorite was like getting to work with these two ladies and also uh, playing a character that was a bit different from what I'm used to. So someone who's a bit more complex and um, ambiguous and it was more of a challenge for me personally as an actor. Um, and I really am grateful to Amelia for that. And Lee, also I wanted to ask you about what really interested you as well in the project and how you became attached to the story in the film as well. For sure. When Lauren was talking, I was thinking, did you meet Amelia on the set of Danielle's shoot? Because I was also there. I'm a producer on that. You anyway, really you're cool. Oh <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's okay. I had also that at the teaser because mm -hmm. that's like when we really bonded. But I remember being like, who's this cool chick on set? Because you had like had a bag with you and your puppy was there. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I, I feel like this is an indicator of like how we kind of all get along and that like part of what was so attractive about the project is that uh, in Montreal, um, you know, there was sort of this like very lovely group of creators who kind of all had overlapping networks and we kind of would run into each other on sets. Um, the very first time I met Amelia and Marielle, the, the other producer on the project was actually in the audition room for a short film that we made. And then ever since I met them, um, I just kept uh, bothering them and like you don't leave them alone <laughs> because I wanted to keep working with them. And so that's really what attracted me to the project was the dynamic of all the people that I knew who were gonna be on set, uh, cast and crew and, um, to the character in particular, um, I really enjoyed uh, how dark and kind of um, ambiguous uh, her character seems when you read her first on the page. And it was a real challenge to have to fill in all the, the uh, fill in all the spaces for myself because even if it's ambiguous for the audience, uh, I had to kind of know what I was doing as a performer. So that was what uh, attracted me to the project. Mm -hmm. And Amelia, I also wanted to ask you about the concept for the film and the script overall and what really interested you in writing the story and what was that experience like for you as the writer really developing the script overall? Yeah, I think when I, when we were making the short film and Dress Me with Lee, I think that we had a conversation kind of about what I wanted to make as a longer form project. And I think the kind of core of it was this couple and the single person going off to a remote location. Um, but then on top of that, um, I knew I wasn't going to get a ton of money to make my first film because it's, you know, that's kind of rare. And there was a particular grant from Telephone Canada that supports like first time filmmakers that I want to get. So I knew how much that was budget wise. So I knew I kind of had to keep it contained to like one location and minimal characters. So I thought this idea kind of might fit for, for the budget level as well. Um, and I guess I really want to tell a story from like one person's perspective and a, kind of an unreliable narrator and we're really like grounded with, with their um, perception of everything. Um, so we don't always know the full story because I thought that was kind of an interesting concept. 
Um, and since the film kind of explores the way we can kind of project narratives onto other people, both good and bad around us, that that kind of approach lended itself nicely to the themes. Um, and then the plot device of the blood kind of um, went through a few different iterations, um, but I landed on that because it felt like kind of a new take on maybe some like vampire myth, but very obviously, you know, away from that as well, but had some kind of um, something quite disturbing about it that I hadn't felt like I had seen before. Um, so that was kind of how I landed on that. And also speaking about being a first time feature filmmaker, I also wanted to ask you about going on to direct the film after working on the script and what that experience was like for you um, writing and then directing um, overall on the set. Um, well, I guess it helps when you write your own stuff because you just have spent a long time with the characters. So I felt like even though I was obviously nervous like anyone would be to actually get on set, I had spent such a long time with the story that you can really rely on your kind of intuition and like your gut feeling because you have really built this foundation of like knowing what you want to say. Um, so the development process of just writing the script was really important then obviously to direct the movie. That doesn't happen all all the time and lots of directors direct stuff they didn't write and that kind of thing but I think especially for my first film I'm really glad I wrote it as well because it just allowed me to be that much closer to the material and so when we're shooting on the day I feel like I I could trust myself that much more because the kind of work had been put in in advance. And um, like you mentioned before I'm um, speaking about being in a, an isolated location overall and I wanted to ask you all about that experience on set and setting the movie in like this isolated cabin in the woods and what that was like being mainly like that one location overall as well. Yeah I mean um, it was really tough finding the location it, we kind of looked all over for a couple months in, in Quebec and because uh, it had to be pretty perfect um and you know ideally we would have found somewhere closer to kind of montreal as like a as a base for for everything um but in the end it was about a two two and a half hour drive from the city so we were definitely out there and there was a lot of kind of logistical issues that came with that but i think inevitably it really helped the cast and crew get into the kind of mindset of the film because we were really isolated ourselves and it was a small crew and it was a very quiet place and there was, you know, forest all around and snow and it was freezing and you definitely got into the right headspace um, for the movie. But logistically it was difficult, but I think from a creative point of view as a director, I was like, yeah, pretty cool, everyone's really in it, you know. So a bit selfishly, I was, I was into the idea of actually kind of committing to, to being in that space while making the movie. Mm -hmm. And um, Lauren and Lee, I also wanted to ask you too about that experience as well as actresses in the movie, what that was like for you being on location while you were filming as well. Um, I don't know, it was challenging, I think, right, Lauren? I mean, we actually were living together. Um, we had our own rooms, but um, we spent a lot of time together. Luckily, she's awesome to be around. I, I think, like, I was probably not always awesome to be around because I found it quite difficult to turn my character off. Um, like, I was, I, we, I, st I slept a lot, especially there was, like, a couple, was it two weeks or one week that we were full night shoots? So it kind of screws with your head on one level because you're um, inversing your circadian rhythm and then you're also having to play this character who's going through a very dark time and then you're also in this very cold, isolated place in the world. And there's also pressure, right? Like um, it's the first time I've been the lead in a feature film and I, it was a big deal for me and I didn't want to let anyone else down. So I, I think there was definitely... I was probably a bit intense sometimes. I think I've been more fun before the shoot and after the shoot to be around, but I hope I wasn't too, too moody. Like, I think sometimes I would like just chill in a corner and be like, I'm, I'm like in my weird headspace. But uh, I was actually, I was having fun. It's just a bit of an intense experience to navigate. And sometimes you can't, uh, uh, can't be sort of your regular, um, chatty self. You're also here. in like every single scene and almost every single shot. So it's like you couldn't really have a break from anything either too, right? It was just so like all encompassing. Yeah, no, but I mean, it was fun. <laughs> I'm, I'm shocked, Lee, that you think that you like weren't a delight to be around because oh. like, well, I'm actually shocked that you were such a delight to be around because I would like, I, I didn't know how much, you know, cause 
thinking as an actor, you're thinking of like what the other actor must be trying to do for themselves to like get themselves into the roles. So I put myself in your shoes a lot and I'd be like, wow, Lee is, is really, really great for, you know, all of the, what she's going through, like emotionally and the hours of shooting and like how strenuous it was. Like you were a delight oh, to be around. I, love um, you. <laughs> I, I felt the same way about you. Cause you were also dealing with your, um, a very serious injury and I was like this girl is like not complaining at all I would be I would be <laughs> whining and moaning about like you know and you were just such a trooper like so I think we kind of maybe we set the tone for each other to kind of like just lean on each other and just do our best yeah. right like there wasn't that pressure to to compete with each other it was really more about like let's do let's do the best job we can together for this movie yeah yeah and I also, and I also wanted to ask about creating the physicality for the characters as well, and what kind of stunt work you both had to do, maybe as actresses, and what that experience was like um, for you all of creating the physicality for the characters as well. Yeah, we had a we had the same question yesterday, and it's interesting because um, I really hadn't thought too much about it until that question was was asked to me. But um, yeah, what I kind of realized after the fact is that I was really, because I'm also very conscious that the movie was shot from really Rowan's point of view and, and her perspective of what's happening. So there were certain scenes where I didn't necessarily make, um, you know, like an obvious choice, but I think I did subconsciously to, there were certain scenes where I sort of played up that, um, image of Emily that Rowan sort of has in her mind and how she paints her to be and becoming more and more of sort of this monster. Um, so I think in some scenes I really tried to embody what I thought Rowan was seeing or like how I thought she was seeing me. So I'd carry myself a little differently, my movements might be slightly different, but then there were some scenes where I think I just kind of settled more into how Emily was actually feeling, especially the scenes where she gets a bit more um, you know, the, the shell cracks a little bit and you see more of her, um, vulnerable side. Um, but then also as, as mentioned, there was another layer to that that I couldn't control because I was in an accident two months prior and I had a broken leg. Um, and I had just started to be able to walk without crutches. Um, so I had this limp, um, so like this, disability at the time that sort of weirdly lended itself to the creepiness of Emily, especially in those um, kind of dark scenes where you see her wandering into the room and stuff. I had this like very ominous limp, um, which definitely lended itself, I think. Mm -hmm. um, Lee, for you as well, what was that experience like of really maybe creating like the physicality for your character as well? Yeah, um, um, yeah, so Rowan, I feel like she feels like lesser than many of the people that she knows, especially Emily. She puts Emily up on a pedestal, so getting in a smaller place mentally for me started with trying to sort of take up even less space than I already do. It's funny, like when I saw myself on camera, I was like, oh my God, I'm so much shorter than I thought. <laughs> I was like, there was a couple like full length shots. I was like, oh, it's like a little, little, I'm, I'm like a little elf in there. But um, <laughs> so it's funny because I always think I'm tall, but really uh, Lauren made my job super easy to, to adapt to the physicality of Rowan because I would get, get on set. She's there like glowing, beautiful, gorgeous. And I would just sort of like, you know, shrivel in her sunlight. And that worked really well for me. So thank you, mm -hmm. Lauren, for being mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, I owe it all to makeup and wardrobe. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. and also I wanted to ask you all about um, working together on developing the story and did you maybe have time to rehearse together at all or what was that experience of really collaborating together on your characters and the script as well? You take it, Amelia. <laughs> oh, sure. Um, yeah, I think because we, like, I was lucky to already kind of have Lee and Lauren pretty early on in the process. And even with the only casting call we did was for Brendan, um, but even with Ari, we found him kind of relatively quickly. And so we were pretty lucky to have at least kind of four or five rehearsals, um, a few just before we started shooting them, like a couple in advance, like a few months apart, because um, we would do kind of wardrobe queens at the same time and stuff. 
and that was so valuable because it was obviously a really tight schedule because of it being low budget and all that kind of stuff. One cool thing that we kind of did um, was the day before we started filming, um, we did a rehearsal in the cabin where we went through all the scenes and kind of like played around with the blocking in advance just so that we didn't have to do that on the day and that like um, the actors would kind of get comfortable in the space too. And so that was something that like was so valuable that I would hope to bring to future films. On my next film, I did not get that luxury. I think we had like half a day of rehearsals, mm -hmm. um, but I, I love rehearsals because it's just that free time to just like play around. There's no pressure on anything and you're just like talking about the characters and then you really build that foundation for when you're on set and you can have a bit more spontaneity or a bit more nuance or whatever. But I think because we had taken that time in the beginning on set, it was really about finessing the performances rather than getting them. Like everything was always so solid. It was just a matter of kind of like, do we want a little bit more of this or a little bit more of that? Um, but because I think we'd all kind of taken that time, the four of us together, the base was, was really strong, I think. Yeah, it was such an advantage, I think, because I mean, I wish you could do that on every, on every set because, you know, once we kind of got to explore it and, um, you know, we had in our minds, okay, this is the atmosphere we're going to, we knew what to expect. So that element was sort of taken away and really we just had to focus on the performances. Um, and especially for my character, Emily, I mean, this cabin is supposed to be some, like a cabin that's been in her family for years and years. So it was, it was nice to get to see it ahead of time and wander around by myself and just like explore things and open drawers and, kind of, you know, get that feeling in my brain that I've been there for years and years. That was really, really helpful. That's funny. Like, I'm really glad we had rehearsals because I like spending time with you guys, but I was definitely stressed out the entire time. Oh, no. <laughs> no, I mean, like, no, I don't mean that in a bad way. Like, I think it's good. Like, I work well under pressure. I think if I hadn't been stressed out, it would have meant that I didn't care about the project or, like, I was not taking it seriously. But I remember feeling, like, at rehearsals, like, oh, God, I hope they don't think that, I, I don't know. I just felt like, oh, it's going to be even, we're going to be even, I'm going to be even better on the day. Cause I feel like in rehearsals, there's this element of like, I don't have the costume. Mm -hmm. I guess when we were in the space, we were in the space, but it's like, there's no crew around like that energy of all the people on set that kind of um, like ignites things and gets things going. Um, so I was always quite self-conscious. I don't know if that's cause I was slipping into my character already or it was just cause I, <laughs> wanted to do a good job, but I'm really grateful for the overall for having those times because I do think it made it a stronger film. Mm -hmm. and also with this being a genre film, I really like them, like the visuals overall. And I wanted to ask about that process of also working with your cinematographer and creating the look for the overall film as well. Yeah, so I was lucky because I was working with a DP I'd already collaborated with, um, Renee Arsenault, who shot my short film as well. And so we definitely already had that working relationship and kind of like rhetoric, I guess, or, you know, language between the two of us that we kind of knew each other that much more, which was really great. Um, and again, it was like, we we're able to talk pretty early on in the process to establish the look and feel of everything. Um, you know, working with a lot of reference material, a lot of reference images, that kind of stuff. And then we kind of set out a list of like a rules for the cinematography as well to kind of keep everything. I'd never obviously done a longer form project too. So I wanted it to feel very visually cohesive as kind of anyone would on a project. But um, I felt like having rules might help us kind of like keep things um, consistent. Um, so it was things like using kind of out of focus, shallow focus as much as possible and letting things be out of focus, um, depending on if it's like Roman's point of view or not, um, using long lens for kind of POV shots as well, like long lens shots can have a very kind of like paranoid feel too, if you're watching someone like the shot of when Emily's in the kitchen and Rowan's watching her through the doorway and you tell her through this like little, like, um, slice of, of the room, um, thinking about trying to build the paranoia with the images. Um, and then on top of that, the sleep paralysis scenes were like something that we really talked about extensively because we were trying to show visually um, that experience and then also someone in and out of consciousness, kind of how that might feel as well. So again, we played around with a lot of kind of out of focus stuff. And then um, we used um, a filter that normally would kind of be like a double vision filter if you put it on but the DP just had it in front of 
um, the lens and would play around. So it was a bit more of an like organic feel and less of a kind of just like filter, you know? Um, so yeah, we talked a lot in advance about the kind of pers uh, perspective thing and, and um, kind of being in and out of consciousness and how to express that visually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And besides the visuals, I also feel like the score for genre films like this one is really important as well. So I also wanted to ask about that process of maybe creating the soundtrack and the music um, that you also included in the film as well. Yeah, well, I was um, lucky that both the sound designer and composer both worked together. So they kind of were able to kind of keep it cohesive, which I really wanted. I wanted kind of like the soundscape and the music to kind of almost feel like one thing, both quite minimalist. Um, and so they were able to kind of work together to create that cohesion um, where maybe you don't really know where one thing ends and one thing begins. Um, something I find really interesting about those kind of spaces and like snow in general as a landscape, it's like it muffles everything. And there's a certain kind of quietness that you get in a cabin in the woods in the snow, you know, that's just like really surreal and quite unsettling. Like it's kind of calm too, but it can also be creepy. So um, we were keeping that in mind as well, because a lot of times I think you, you want to add a lot of sounds to kind of really fill out the space. But a lot of times we were trying to like less is more, you know, take stuff out because I think sometimes when things are just like so quiet as well, it can be quite strange. Um, so we we're definitely going for a very minimalist um, feel. And uh, I think it really helps kind of keep the cabin with that, you know, same feeling because you are in the middle of nowhere, you know, there's no city, there's no sirens, there's no like, sometimes all you're hearing is like the wind, you know, but then if you hear a creek upstairs or someone walking somewhere like that's going to feel that much more uh, present um, when it's so, so, so quiet. And also I wanted to ask about producing the film and what that experience was like of you will like balancing directing and acting with producing as well on the set. Uh, uh, you want to take yeah, it. no, go, go ahead. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I came on as a producer uh, for post-production. Um, so I've really been uh, sort of supporting Amelia through the final stages of packaging up the film, getting it ready for festivals, distribution, and doing a lot of the unglamorous stuff like insurance and um, contract negotiation, which I genuinely enjoy. So I don't know what's wrong with me. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so that's been a really exciting experience to kind of be involved, not only on the creative end as a performer, but also to do some of the business stuff. Um, because that's in, on both sides, that's been a new experience for me. It's my first time producing a feature. Uh, so Marielle Sharp is the lead producer. She was the one on the day who made sure that I could focus on the acting and um, who, who got everything up and running and made sure everyone was safe and happy and well fed and that everything was well oiled. So full kudos to her. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's been really fun to work closely with Amelia on post-production um, because I feel like we both um, grown a lot as uh, creators and and also as business people in a weird way like which wasn't something that I expected to get out of this project at all. It's a weird side of filmmaking like you yes. want it just to be this like perfect creative bubble of just like art but then you kind of realize once you make bigger projects too that it's like there's this huge business side of it which is good because it allows you to make movies and people to see them and all this kind of stuff but it's sometimes it's uh it's not so fun. Well, obviously Lee finds it. I like it. I don't know. I'm crazy. It about it. <laughs> but I think on like a low budget film too, you know, like um, I was, a, once we were on set, I was very able to focus on the directing side, which was great. But when you just have limited people producing too, you end up doing kind of like double duty and a lot of stuff as well. So I think that was just kind of the nature of the project was having to kind of, you know, do multiple things because it's a lot for one person. And also I wanted to ask you all about why you all feel it's important for a genre film like this one to have such like a strong female cast and crew um, in front of and behind the camera and what that experience was like for you all working with so many uh, women behind the scenes as well and as in front of the camera as well. Oh, I love this question. Mm -hmm. Do you want to take it away then? No, you, you guys take it away. I just like the question. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think it's very important. Um, you know, pretty obvious reasons of just like the more variety of people telling stories, I think the more kind of 
diverse and interesting stories we're going to get as well. And I mean, most of cinema is kind of going to be from a male, has been from a male perspective. Um, but then on top of that, horror as well, you know, and, but then on top of that, you know, a lot of horror films do have female leads, but you still have a kind of male perspective on that. And that can be, you know, not always exploitative, but naturally there are going to, there are lots of, you know, films that fall into that camp. So I think there's a certain level of kind of like, um, reclaiming some of those tropes or some of those kind of images of women that have been seen in horror films. Um, and I think that on top of that, um, women are going to maybe have like, or female directors and writers are going to have a kind of subversion of those things and a different perspective of that stuff. Cause you are dealing with kind of tropes and imagery and things we've seen before, which I think is really cool about the genre, but it's about kind of, um, turning those things on their head a little bit and maybe taking a new perspective. And then in terms of like working with women on set, I think it's just like, you know, it's, um, it's really great. I'm very fortunate that like my circle in Montreal, like I do just know a lot of women who um, do a variety of things in the crew. And so um, we we're kind of lucky to bring a lot of those people on board. Uh, Cause a lot of times, you know, certain departments can be a bit of a boys club and stuff. And, um, you know, I think that's something that it's good to just keep working towards, you know, when you have the power of a production, how can you kind of help contribute to that? Yeah. Sorry, I was just going to say that, um, to add to that, it was, it was my first experience really being um, on set with so many women. Um, a lot of things I've shot, I think everything, almost everything I've shot in the past is like written or directed by men. And um, I think we, we spoke about this yesterday um, as well, but we were just saying how it's, it's interesting that, you know, we were sort of almost apologizing for it not being this like, um, you know, beautiful depiction of female friendship. But I mean, ultimately telling female stories is about talking about all aspects of being female and the female experience. And it's not always happy and sunshine and rainbows. And, and you know, a lot of the times women deal with sort of manipulative, toxic, friendships and that's you know a theme in this and I think it's, it's worth being explored and it's something we don't see a lot from a female perspective um, you might see that kind of friendship in other films but it's often from a male gaze so it's I mean personally for me it was really interesting to be a part of this complex um, story by a female about female friendship um, yeah and the set was Wonderful. I felt like every time I went to set, I it was like being hugged or something. <laughs> <laughs> like everyone's energy was was just very like loving and and motherly in a way. Like everyone was just there to take care of each other and tell this crazy story. It's funny when we I was thinking about yeah what we were talking about yesterday as well and like um, how when there was a lack of representation for women or people of color or like you know variety of film i'm making um like that people then feel like that film has to stand for all that representation right it's like okay well then is that a proper depiction of women but you're like no one can represent mm -hmm. all of a gender all of an ethnicity like or all of a, you know subculture anything like it's just um you know so i think sometimes that can be hard because there can be that criticism sometimes too of like um, for much bigger films as well like oh well what is it saying about this group of people and you're like that's just that person's story and you would never say that about a straight white male story because you just be like they're just the character they don't need to represent all straight white males you know so um i think sometimes it's just again it's having lots of different people you know behind the camera is just going to create a a bigger spectrum of stories that don't need to feel like they need to represent all of one, you know. There's also like a level of feeling like your story is valid when you're working with people who are coming from similar experiences, whether it's because they identify as women or they whatever, whatever, whatever experience you have in common, you don't have to explain to each other why it's important or why it's uh, interesting. And I think that's, um, 
you know, what was the beauty of this film is that everyone was coming to set with the understanding that this was an important story that we had to tell. Whereas in the past, when I've created work or been, you know, trying to advocate for a certain kind of story, I felt like I often had to explain why uh, stories about women or female relationships mattered, um, which is sort of crazy to me, but that has been my reality in other scenarios. And that certainly wasn't at all the reality uh, on the set of Lead With Me. Also, I wanted to ask you all about the experience of having the movie premiere at Fantasia and it, um, now being virtual, um, what that experience has been like of maybe reaching audiences and really being able to experience the premiere in that virtual way as well. Yeah, I mean, it was definitely very disappointing to know it was going online when we first found out. Obviously, it was the right choice for the festival to make in terms of everyone's safety and stuff. And like, obviously, I fully support it. But there's that's always the kind of goal as a filmmaker is you want to then get to that place where you're in the dark room with the audience and the big screen and everything. So it was definitely a bit of a blow just to kind of not get that for my first film and to be so excited about the world premiere at Fantasia was obviously great and so I couldn't wait for that moment and then it was kind of a shame that that couldn't happen. Obviously this is kind of the world we're living in right now. Um, but I feel like the festival's done a really great job to still kind of keep the energy up and uh, you know I had a really good time watching the movie again and then like doing the Q&A and engaging with people online and stuff like it's still been a really fulfilling experience so overall it's been very positive. Yeah, I don't know. Like I, I definitely was in the exact same boat with you when we found out, Amelia, like of like, oh, like kind of a bit of a, a punch to the gut of like, this wasn't at all what we were expecting when we, when mm -hmm. we shot the film. This wasn't the kind of premiere we imagined. But I'm very grateful for the opportunity. I'm so glad that they went ahead with the, the festival. It's been something really exciting to look forward to in this very strange time in the world. And a really unexpected benefit of going virtual was... Um, that so many more people across Canada were able to join in and watch our premiere, like my grandparents who wouldn't, uh, who live in a different province, who wouldn't have been able to make it otherwise. So that's kind of been interesting. And then if I put my business hat on, it's also interesting to think about the evolution of what cinema will be. Um, you know, we're navigating a festival circuit that's like essentially entirely virtual, for, which is unprecedented in the history of festival circuits. So it's interesting to be doing that for the first time in like an unchartered uh, landscape. And I think, you know, I think there's always gonna be a place for people meeting in a room and watching a film together. That's a beautiful thing. But, um, you know, the future is, is online and, and it's digital and it's kind of been exciting to be a, a part of that transition or that evolution, um, whether we would have opted for that or not, it's, it's been a, a cool adventure. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think that was me late, but thank you all again for taking the time out to speak with me. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Congrats. Thanks. Thanks.